remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. South Carolina in what appears to be the second such drill. Special forces have been deployed domestically alongside local sheriffs to train for midnight raids in Richland County. The footage you're seeing right now is the third special forces group out of Fort Bragg conducting a nighttime raid during an exercise. This is the special forces unit deployed. Sheriff Leon Lott stated that, quote, Richland County is an ideal location for training that cannot be replicated at Fort Bragg. Coordinating with the special forces will be the county's special response team, or SWAT, to provide, quote, simulated scenarios for the military. What's more chilling than coordinated domestic raid training is that official reports state that live ordnance and gunfire will be employed. To top it off, the media has been restricted from any kind of embedded reporting to provide transparency for the drills. Now you can add this drill to the long list of domestic training exercises that have occurred so far this year. FEMA camp roundup drills in Florida, martial law training in California, Marines prepping for riot control in Virginia, and of course the mother of all drills, Jade Helm. This is another glaring example of the militarization of local police nationwide who have received nearly half a billion dollars in military equipment from the Department of Defense. So this begs the question, who is training who? When local sheriffs receive military equipment and then the special forces train alongside SWAT, the lines are blurred. The color of authority is transferred to the local police as they become a militarized force. Local law enforcement can't violate posse comitatus, but they can use the same equipment and tactics as the military, making them one and the same. Just a different jurisdiction, thus skirting the law and violating the Constitution. The Sun Sentinel has reported and now video has surfaced of special forces operations taking place under the cover of night in Broward County, Florida. The shocking video shows Black Hawk helicopters flying low and landing as Americans are marched single file through the city streets and then loaded into white vans taken to mock internment camps. Frightening, frightening video. Now 200 military personnel from all four branches of the military took part in this coordinated drill the locations of which were not disclosed to the public prior to the urban warfare training exercise. Now the Sentinel is reporting that, quote, the goal is to prepare participants in realistic, unfamiliar training conditions before they deploy for combat overseas. However, concerned citizens are not buying it, and they believe there is a dual purpose for the action, and that is to train soldiers for real-life domestic martial law. Likewise, it's important to note that the Jade Helm exercises have recently labeled Texas and Utah as hostile territories in documents related to that exercise. Now let's flash back to 2009. The web was then ablaze with the revelation that the National Guard was hiring soldiers to become internment camp specialists. Military Occupational Specialty, Internment Resettlement Specialist. The Army's internment resettlement specialist plays an integral role in providing a uniform system of handling prisoners and detainees. First and always, these MPs are combat support soldiers, trained to fight. Then as internment resettlement specialists, trained to control and supervise detainees, to ensure humane treatment, and to assist them in returning to a productive life. For this job, you must qualify for a secret clearance. Now, for those of you watching right now thinking that this is just some crank conspiracy nonsense and Americans will never be rounded up and forced into camps, I'll leave you with the words of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Now, he recently said in February of 2014, he issued a stark warning when he spoke to a group of students at the University of Hawaii. Now, he was responding to a question about the 19... 44 Supreme Court ruling that upheld internment of Americans during World War II. He said, quote, you are kidding yourself if you think the same thing will not happen again. The ruling was wrong, but I would not be surprised to see it happen again in time of war. It's no justification, but it is the reality. When a Supreme Court justice tells you it will happen again, perhaps we should listen. 
An operational readiness exercise conducted at the Naval Weapons Station in Yorktown, Virginia. Marines training for riot control. That's right. Marines training for riot control. Per the usual, the exercise was given the cover story of overseas preparation. Sergeant Andrew S. Wilbur, a non-lethal weapons instructor, said of a similar exercise, quote, consider they are hypothetically operating within an embassy. However, as we've been following for weeks, public concerns are running high amidst the recent Fort Lauderdale FEMA camp roundup drills and Ontario, California martial law training. Participants in this latest training exercise were the Bravo Fleet Anti-Terrorism Security Team Company. Oddly, the high production footage you're seeing right now is directly from the Department of Defense. It is a professional news package intended for the public to see. So this exercise actually has a two-fold effect. First, the Marines are training for riot and crowd control on American soil where Tea Partiers and constitutionalists are constantly demonized by politicians and the media. In the event of civil unrest, these same Marines could deploy this training upon Americans. Second, the media production aspect of this is chilling because it shows they're doing this in full public view. They want this to be seen. Why? Because they want the public to accept Marines, not police, conducting riot control during the coming martial law and societal breakdown. While training is a common part of military life, these tactics are suspect in context of our other reports. Our top story on CBS2 News, if you see a group of military helicopters flying high and dipping low in the skies above downtown L.A. later today, do not panic. CBS2's Kirk Hawkins is live in downtown L.A. with a look at last night's special ops training maneuvers with video you'll see only right here on CBS2. Kirk. Hey, Sabila, good morning. We know that the downtown skyline here is popular for Hollywood film crews, but now we know that members of the military are using it to prepare for conflicts around the world. I'm going to step out of the way and give you a close-up look at the U.S. Bank building from where we are. In a second, we're going to give you an up-close and personal look at what it looks like from high above there because that was just one of the many training sites that the military has been using over the past few days. In this video from Sky 2, last night, you can see dramatic military maneuvers by special operations forces over the sky of downtown L.A. Our camera captured a Black Hawk helicopter and four other so-called OH-6s flying over the city. The Black Hawk hovered over the U.S. Bank building before it made a practice drop-off at a nearby park. At one point, our camera captured a soldier sitting with his legs dangling outside the chopper. We talked to one expert who said all this training probably was a dry run for a future mission. But it's always best to, to get um, the closest uh, terrain layout to what the objective is, wherever it could be, again, worldwide. The LAPD won't reveal the exact details of the training exercises, but they say they're assisting the military as they focus on urban environments. The training is expected to continue again tonight. Military exercises and drills are not something uncommon, whether it's in the United States or anywhere across the world. But it's not every time that uh, such exercises become a reason for public paranoia and even protest movements. Now, a uh, large-scale um, military drill called, called uh, Jade Helm 15 is launching today in seven states, including Texas, Louisiana, uh, Florida, and Utah. The main mission of uh, the exercise is to train the so-called unconventional warfare in uh, deserted and remote areas to train soldiers how to operate in difficult conditions. It's estimated that in Texas alone, more than 1,200 uh, military men will take part in this uh, exercise. Uh, there will be uh, different sorts of trainings, including uh, nightly helicopter extraction, hostage takeovers, and even a role play um, uh, modeled after the French resistance to Nazi occupation during uh, World War II. The level of realism sought by the planners of this exercise is so high uh, that it's unclear now whether uh, the troops will actually try to blend in with civilians during this uh, training. According to a PowerPoint presentation prepared by the military organizers, some of the Jade Helm 15 participants may conduct suspicious activities, I quote, and 
part of their trainings and others will be wearing civilian attire and driving civilian vehicles. On several, in several instances, uh, the army even asked for um, uh, public facilities or abandoned, let's say, hospitals to be presented to them uh, for uh, this exercise. But all in all, information about this particular drill is very scarce. Not a lot is known about uh, where and how uh, the training will be actually uh, conducted. And this has, this has become uh, the reason for unease uh, among uh, people living in the areas. In particular, the InfoWars um, website recently reported uh, that the ac acronym for the helm could be the homeland eradication of local militants. Some in Texas even go as far as believing that the actual reason for these exercises is to um, completely take over, militarily take over Texas. The New York Times reported that in several parts of Texas, residents were either burying some of their firearms to hide them or, uh, to the contrary, some farmers rumored uh, to have been buying um, thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition. But not only the um, army officials who are saying that there will be no disruptions to everyday life of citizens across uh, the areas where the exercises are held, uh, but also some of the local officials are saying that this is not a problem at all. One of the mayors in Texas, the mayor of the town of El Dorado, even said that the army could use his ranch uh, in this military exercise. So strong the level of public concern has been in relation to the Jade uh, Helm uh, 15 military exercise that there's now even a protest movement called Counter Jade Helm. And these guys are uh, looking to follow the military gear and to report to a special web's website as to how uh, the military exercise is going. Men in Kevlar vests and helmets, camouflage, carrying automatic rifles, moving in tactical armored vehicles. These aren't American troops on the battlefield, but police in Ferguson. One observer says he thought he saw police in an MRAP. An MRAP is a mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicle. It's built to withstand armor-piercing bombs. Uh, this is not something that we need in American communities. But Kara Dansky of the ACLU says more than 500 MRAPs have made their way from Afghanistan and Iraq to local police forces in America just over the past couple of years. It's part of what the ACLU, in a recent report, called the excessive militarization of American policing. Indications of that are everywhere in Ferguson. Police in these towns are getting much of this combat equipment free of charge from the Pentagon. The Defense Department says just in 2013, nearly $450 million worth of military equipment was given to law enforcement. A defense official says Ferguson police only got a couple of Humvees and a trailer. But police departments throughout Missouri, which are assisting in Ferguson, got 20 MRAPs and hundreds of M16 rifles in recent years. Critics say often when they get these weapons, policemen's attitudes change. Bring it! Increasingly, the police are trained to view the people in the communities that they're supposed to be protecting and serving as enemies. It's not just their possession of all this equipment that's an issue. Watchdog groups say many of these police departments lack the training in how to use these weapons responsibly, and that often escalates the dangers. Dangers like police overreacting when conducting minor operations like serving search warrants. They will drive up in an armored personnel carrier, raid a person's home, holding assault rifles, holding people at gunpoint, yelling at everyone to get on the floor. This is an extremely traumatic experience, and we've seen over and over again situations like this where people are traumatized, and sometimes people are injured and killed. But current and former police say criminals have increasingly more firepower, and law enforcement can't afford to be outgunned. If people are shooting at the police and committing looting and other violent acts, then the police need to protect themselves. The Defense Department supports this trend overall. While it would take you or me four to six weeks and unending hassle and documentation to secure a passport, as reported by the Washington Post, your local police force need only fill out a one-page form for an armored personnel carrier.